Yo, Venom Squad. Willie, back to Venom Central. Hey guys, we're back to Venom Central. We're going to switch gears today and do something a little different. I know everybody wants to see the kill clips and, and the animals and stuff, but I've been getting a lot of response on people wanting to know about products and, and, and know what I use. So we're going to talk a little bit about reptile room setup. I'm going to show you some of the things that I use that have worked well for me for years. I want to give a shout out to a couple of the Venom Squad, Danny Santos and Steve Knight. Hey brothers, I didn't mean to ignore you. I just don't realize that sometimes I can't get all my comments on my mobile app and I don't do the computer stuff so we've got the wife doing that once a week checking for comments but I try to get to everybody but thank you Danny thank you Steve for your support and uh, I'm gonna keep pumping them out for you guys today we're gonna just do some product stuff and just so everybody knows I'm not getting no kind of kickback on, on, on showing these products and, and pushing them I'm just doing this just so you can see what works and as many years as I've been doing this, I mean, I've been doing this 35 years. This is just to share the education that I've got and I've learned over the years of using different products and what works and what don't. Everything I'm going to talk about today and the, and the things I'm going to show you today, there'll be a link below to all this stuff. Now, you may be able to find the exact same model or product. I'm sure there's upgraded new new stuff because some of the products that I have, I've had for several years and some of them I've had for a long time and that's why I'm showing them to you because they're good products and they last. I'm going to start with heating your room. You know when we're heating up a, a room designated just for our snakes or, or, or our reptiles in general, <clears throat> especially during the winter, you want to get something you can rely on is something that's sturdy that's going to last a long time because the little portable heaters that we end up buying and trying the little I mean they're, they're, they're they only last a short time and they burn up and but what I found that works the best for me is some of these oil radiator heaters now this is a radiant heat and you notice I got a fan in front of it. I've got them off right now so the fan isn't buzzing so, so you guys can hear me. But these things work great and they last a long time. And even in a large room like this, now what I do to monitor these things, because if you plug these things straight into the wall and just turn them on high or turn, I mean, you're going to spend a year trying to get this thing set to a certain point where it's going to be the temperature that you want it at. And it just doesn't work. But what I do, and I've, I've, I've been using these things for several years, they're, they're awesome, are these Johnson controls. These things are designed just as a proportionate thermostat for these heaters, and they'll shut these heaters on and off as they need to once it reaches the temperature. But we'll do a close-up on these. I'm going to do a tabletop on these to explain it to you. But here's another quick tip that, that I found works good with these radiator heaters. Now, I'll put a fan in front of them because the radiant heat, you know, it comes out slow and it heats up the objects around the room and stuff. But just so I have air circulation and air moving and keeping the heat blowing around continuously, I'll put a fan in front of them to suck the warm air out and blow it out into my room. Now, believe it or not, this damn little radiator heater and this fan and that Johnson Control keeps my room, this is one of the big main rooms, it keeps this damn room at 70 degrees perfectly during the winter, and that's when it's cold out. I mean, I live in South Carolina, and everybody thinks, well, it's, it's damn near warm all year round. It's not. It gets cold here. But, and in the summer, I put a damn window unit right in the damn window, a little air conditioner, to keep it cool. And that's pretty simple and self-explanatory. You just go buy an air conditioner, stick it in the window, set it, and run it. But these things are awesome. And I'll tell you, it's more efficient than using them little space heaters. And it doesn't draw as much power, but it's a nice radiant heat. And with the fan circulating it, it works really well. But we're going to do some stuff. I'm going to show you these products up close. Okay, and to show you this, this, this Johnson controller, now let me tell you, these things... 
they're they're not easy to find. I mean, we searched high and low to find these things, and I started using these things a long time ago, and then literally when I started at the Serpentarium, I noticed that my buddy Dean was using them too, and I was like, man, where do you find them at? And he's like, man, I can't find them nowhere either. But I'll tell you, I ended up finding some of them in the old stock at Granger Supply, and I found some on eBay, but there are new models out there that are digital, and the digital ones work fine too, but the thing is, you want it to coincide with that with that oil heater. Now, these are for heat only. They, they're, they're not the dual spectrum that do cooling and heating. You want the one that just does the heating, but I like the old ones with the dial because you can... You can dial that son of a bitch into a fraction. I mean, it's it's just more precise than the the digital ones where you got to put in a temperature and sometimes it doesn't read right. But but let me tell you, um, these things are expensive too. I mean, like I paid 160 bucks for this one, and and when I found that Granger Supply had a couple of them, I bought the ones that they had left. I bought them all. But <clears throat> if you look on eBay, you may be able to find some old refurbished ones. But it's a great product, and what it does is you plug your you plug your heater directly into this, and you plug this directly into the wall, and then this coil is your thermostat. So, and you kind of hang it up center room, you know, so you get a good radiant temperature. But this takes the reading for you and sends it into the unit, and it will shut that heater on and off as it needs to. It's there. These things are awesome. Johnson Controls, but you got to use the fan to keep air moving and circulated, and it heats the whole room that way. But it's a great product, and if you can find them, I suggest, I mean, if you're doing a whole room, you need to be able to heat a whole room instead of a singular cage. You know, it's, it's good for keeping your temperatures right in your room. I mean, I have a room with a bunch of different species in it, but these are all my warmer species. So I keep this room at about 78 degrees. And stuff that needs a little hot spot and stuff, I'll use heat tape along with another proportionate thermostat for that. But this is good for your overall control. And you ain't got to spend a bunch of money on a heater. The heaters are actually inexpensive. You can get them for, I don't know, 55, 65 bucks. I just bought a new one. I don't know, a few years ago, I think it was like 85 bucks. But another thing, them new radiator heaters, they come digital now too. I don't like the digital ones. I like the old school dial ones. The digital ones don't seem to read true. So try to stay with the dial ones and the dial thermostats. They seem to work better and you can set them more true. Okay, next I'm going to talk about heating singular units and and. And, I mean, we've already went over, like, how, how to keep your entire room to a certain temperature, but I'm going to talk about heat tape. But I'll tell you, um, if you're just heating a singular unit or a singular cage, of course you're always going to go with, you know, with your with your heat tape, flex watt heat tape, great stuff. You're going to wire it, but what you don't want to do is just wire it and plug this damn thing into the wall and because this shit runs hot. It gets hot, so you need to control this. It's got to be controlled to the temperature that you want it at. So, I run the Inkbird, and we're going to show a picture of that. The, the Inkbird proportionate thermostat, they're inexpensive, and they work really good. And what it does is it will shut this thing on and off as it needs to. And it's got a probe that you can sit on the heat tape, and it takes the reading directly off the heat tape. Or you can put that probe inside your cage... To take a reading from inside your cage. But I like to set them right on the heat tape because I get a true reading and then I'll alter the temperature on what I want it inside. But you definitely want to run a proportionate thermostat with heat tape because you can cook your shit. I've seen it happen. And whatever you do, you don't want to use this garbage. This kind of stuff that you can buy in a pet store and all that. I mean, yeah, this works. You can plug it in the wall. And you can probably plug this into a proportionate thermostat, but these things run so damn hot, it's unbelievable. And they don't last long. And I've tried these on smaller things, and it's like they're 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 basically junk. But go with flex watt, it's good stuff. You can wire them up yourself. You see, I I kind of put that fire resistant stuff around the ends of them and, and make them nice and neat. But stay away from this crap. But anyways, the 
portion thermostats are great for your heat tape. And I run the heat tape through my racks, through all of my racks, and I'll use that Inkbird. It's a good little unit, but on my bigger cages, and if I got heat tape under them, Helix. Helix controls. Man, it's the best product that you can get for that stuff. I bought my Helix probably 17, 18 years ago. If it's been that long, I think. But I'll tell you something. And they've never wavered. They're, they're freaking perfect. You see these on my racks and on my bigger cages. The Helix controls. And they're designed just for heat tape and reptile use. It's a great product. And this is the shit. This is what I think is the best proportion thermostat out there. They're easy to use, and Helix stands behind their stuff. I mean, if this thing screws up on you, you send it back, they'll send you a new one. I mean, it's a good product. I've had these for a long time, and they have never broke. They've never been off temperature. They're perfect. So I use two different kinds. You can see I got the ink bird up here. I use the ink bird for doing the smaller stuff. I'm running the eyelash wiper bin. That runs that heat tape. The Helix runs the heat tape for all the units. From the price, Helix is the bomb. I mean, they're they're a little more pricey, but you get what you pay for. It is a good, good unit. And FlexWild heat tape, good stuff. Another important tool that I use constantly, I mean, this thing stays in my hand all the time, are heat guns. I mean, these are the infrared heat guns, okay? Now... This one, you can buy these at auto parts stores. You can, you can get them on Amazon. You can get them online. And they're designed where you can get a reading off of objects anywhere at any time. And they're pretty accurate. Now, I've found that I've went through dozens of these through the years. And I've found that some of them can be a degree or two off. So you kind of got to calibrate them with a damn actual another thermostat and see how close they are. So I do it with like three or four other thermostats and I'll set them all in one spot and see how they're reading. And if there's one that's two degrees higher or two degrees lower, I chunk it. But these are a must for a serious reptile guy. I mean, these are great. And these are inexpensive. You can get these for, I mean, for as cheap as $20 now. But the best one I've ever owned and ever used is this one and I don't even know if this one is still in production now this one was a gift from a buddy of mine Floyd he gave me this a long long time ago and let me tell you this thing is on the money and it is still working perfectly and it's this Actron one and it's just this is my tool man this this thing is like in my back pocket at all times but let me tell you this one is the best one I've ever seen and I don't know if this company is even still out there, but this is a really old one, but it's a good one. But these work too. So you need a heat gun so you get a true reading on cool side, warm side, so you can figure things out for yourself. But I should have showed you this before, but back with the heat guns, I mean, these things are awesome. This one is the best one I've ever seen, but these are good too. You know, I can just pop, get a temperature. Now that tabletop, because I got a light right here. It's saying that it's 79 degrees, okay? Now, just to show you, I'm going to take a temperature reading on this one. This one says 78 degrees. Now, I know for a fact that this one is 2 degrees off, because this one has been calibrated with about 10 other thermostats. So, that's why you get what you pay for. If you buy one of these cheap ones, you could be two degrees off in any other direction. And to me, two degrees means a lot. I want my shit precise. So this old school one, it's on the money. <laughs> but, you know, just to get a roundabout temp, okay, you use this one. Now, I've got a couple more of these that are calibrated and they work right. But that one is the one, the Atron. But I also use my little AccuRite. Digitals. Now, you've probably seen these things stationed all over my snake room. I put them low, I put them high. I got these damn things everywhere. And I like the ones that read the humidity and the temperature because I can get a true reading on 
higher points in the room, lower points in the room. Of course, lower points are always going to be a little bit cooler, but you can get a true reading. Now, I've got everything off in here while we're filming. That's why my, my stuff's down to 45% humidity in here, which is a little low for this room. But 77 degrees is about where I like to keep it this time of year. But let me tell you, now, they also make these. Now, these things, you can get these at Walmart. You can get these at garden centers and whatever. You can find them on Amazon. They're, they're pretty easy to find. But I like these, these two unit ones because they're designed to hang this outside and this one will be inside so you find out how cold it is outside and compared to inside. But I use them. I'll put one up high and I'll use the little satellite reader and I'll put it down low in one area in my room so I can get a true reading what it is up high and what it is down low. Temperature is everything which, with, with your reptiles. You know, temps are really important. And you got to monitor that shit so you know what's going on. But these things, they're inexpensive, and I put them everywhere. I, I, I just post them everywhere. For lighting and stuff like that, having stuff on a photo period, having stuff on a light cycle, when you're running a bigger room like this, it's just important. So I'm not running in here turning the lights on every day. Sometimes you're, you're not getting in here at the same time. And, you know, it's you got to run stuff on timers. And these timers, they're easy to use. I plug my damn, all my lights into them. And I'll run these off of, a, off of an extension cord if needed to be. They still work. You don't necessarily have to plug them straight into a wall. I've got these set. 12 on, 12 off, then the winner goes 12 on, or I'm sorry, uh, 16 and 8, you know, for whatever you need to do. But I've found that these Brinks timers, they're good for about a year, and then they burn out. I don't know why, but I've tried a bunch of different timers, but then they burn out. But this damn first alert, this is a first alert timer. These things, now, I switched over to using these. All my timers, I'm using these first alerts, and they're easy to use. You just kind of, you can lift them up for on and push them down for off, and you can set your cycle. But these ones, I've been using these for about three years, and they're still running good. So these first alert ones work pretty good. And it just makes sense, so you're not running around turning turn the lights on and off all the time. I set all my stuff on timers. But the Brinks ones, they're garbage. Stay away from them. The first alert ones are pretty good. Another thing that I use is humidifiers. I run cool mist humidifiers in my rooms, and I'm going to show you one. But if you run a hot mist, uh, I'm sorry, a hot mist humidifier, it jacks your temperature up. So I run the cool mist humidifier, and the best one I've found is the Breathe Easy. And they had a commercial I've seen on TV. I mean, you fill them up, they run for 10 hours. And you can choose how much you want to come out, how much, how much of the humidity you want dispersed in your room. They're, it's a great product, but I'm going to show you that one too. But let me tell you, if you're going to keep the reptile collection that's small or keep one that's large, when you got as many animals as I got, you need to be able to control your room. So if you're just keeping single animals or just a few, you need to control that habitat. Okay, another thing that I use in my main room and I run a really small one in my in my Bushmaster and Eyeless Viper room and in the African room but it's a HEPA clean air system. I'm big on air quality. I mean that's why you'll see fans stationed around. I like air moving and stuff but let me tell you this thing right here it's worth its weight in gold. It keeps it it keeps the smell down. I mean I keep my stuff really clean. I'm like OCD about it. But, let's face it, reptile rooms get a smell. They get the reptile smell. And to me, it doesn't stink, and it, and it really doesn't. But I've had people come into my snake room and go, man, it actually smells fresh and clean in here. But it's because I run a heaven in here. Now, this one, I've had this thing for, I don't know, 15, 16 years also. And let me tell you, it's a, uh, it's a Hamilton Beach. Now, I've got it off right now because it's loud. But... It's got a couple different settings. It can blow, the air comes out of the top of it, sucks air in here, and blows out the top. And I keep it on whisper. It's kind of quiet, but it constantly runs. 
But let me tell you, it's got the HEPA filter here, and this is the biggest one I could find. And then it's got an ultraviolet light in here that kills any kind of airborne bacteria and stuff like that. But if you're bringing new species in, even after they've been quarantined and all that stuff, it's, it helps cut down that airborne transmitted stuff. But, and it keeps your room, the air quality better. I mean, I like to have my room where I can open my damn windows, of course, and and a lot of windows get open during the winter, believe it or not, just because I'm trying to knock stuff down colder. But, and in the summer, the right temperature, there's fans in the window sucking nice fresh air in. But when you can't do that, a HEPA looks great. And it helps stop growth of bacteria and, and just air, airborne transmitted shit that reptiles get. HEPA filter, it's, it's, it's the way to go. And this one has been running for years, non-stop, and it still runs great. And like I said, it's a, it's a Hamilton Beach, and it's got the HEPA filter and the ultraviolet light. That's the one you want. But it's just the lengths we go to, for health of our animals. And if you're serious as I am, you get this kind of shit because you want it right. But just another quick tip, guys. Run a HEPA filter in your room. It's great for the animals, and it's great for you. You're breathing fresh, clean air. Okay, now my humidifiers that I run, I like these as seen on TV, these, these three easies. And I've tried a bunch of different different humidifiers. I've tried the damn Vix ones, the coolness. I've tried a, I've tried a bunch of them. And let me tell you, this one by far is the best one that I've ever found. And it blows a nice cool mist out of here. And I mean look at it. I mean, it's got timers, you just set it. I mean it's it's perfect. But it also, this thing telescopic, you know, if you want it lower, rising up. But of course, I run a ceiling fan in this room, so it sucks it up and spreads it out. But it's also got little directionals on it. You can point which way you want it to blow. But it's a great humidifier. And literally, you can fill this thing up, and it'll run for like 10 hours. And that's on high. Now, we run this in the Bushmaster room, and also with the eyelash wipers, this thing stays on maybe two, three hours a day, and it gets my humidity in here. Well, it gets my humidity in here up to 70 degrees, and that's perfect. And if I let it run longer, it will take it up to 75, 80, 80% 80 humidity. But you see how, how cold we keep it in here. 75 during the day, 73 at night. That's how you keep stuff. Keep it cool. It does better. But let me tell you, for the price, you can't beat this. This thing is awesome. And I run one in every room. And it keeps stuff perfect. And you need that humidity. Let me get this damn thing in face. <laughs> but the, the secret to nice sheds and, and, and animals doing well is humidity. If the humidity is right, you're going to have your animals shed out nice. They're going to have nice, complete sheds. If you're dealing with a dry area that there's no humidity, that's when you're going to get stuck sheds. You're going to have problems. And this is good because it actually helps the animal shed. It goes through a nice shed cycle, but it's also good for their respiratory. It's, it's you know, this in conjunction with the damn HEPA air filter. It's just, it's, it's good for the animal all around. So if you've got a bunch of animals like me and you're, you're, you're trying to keep them all in the same schedule and the same temperature and the same humidity and same thing. You run this stuff in your rooms. But that's the one you want to look into. That's the best one I've ever found. Hey guys, I hope you found this, this, this interesting or, or I, I hope it at least helps one person, <laughs> if not any. But just some of the stuff that I use and, and the way that I use it and what's worked well for me for all these years. But don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and share. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and come back. We actually do some exciting stuff once in a while. <laughs> and I know this is kind of boring, but but I'm doing this for the Venom Squad. I've had several people ask me about products and what I use. and So I figure I'll just do a little video on it and, and we'll, we'll, we'll share some knowledge on, on, on what I use. Because believe me, I spent a bunch of money using a bunch of different things. So, hopefully we can help you guys find the right shit the first time. So, anyways, 
Don't forget to come back and check out Madam Central. Willie, checking out. Later.